Dan Perry here for part 13 of our TCPIP basics series, how to do subnetting and the calculations, and we're going to learn to do the calculations in this video. Now, when we're calculating the uh, number of subnets and the number of IP addresses, I find we start with the total number of networks and IP addresses rather than in the previous video where I showed you the uh, usable number of IP addresses and networks in a subnetted network. Uh, by doing the total number and then finding the usable, it just makes not only the calculations a little easier, but when we later put them into a spreadsheet, uh, doing the spreadsheet and automating it is a, makes it a, an easier way to build. Now, going back and looking before our example, we had a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0, which was a standard class B mask. We borrowed 4 bits to make 20 bits part of the network and left 12 bits as the host. By borrowing the four bits, what we now have is the ability to do the calculation since we know how many bits we've borrowed and how many bits are part of the host. So the total number of networks is two raised to the number of bits borrowed. So that's two to the fourth or 16 networks. Now, the number of IP addresses in each of those networks, well, there are 12 bits left in the host part so we take 2 and raise it to the number of bits remaining, and there is an error on the slide. It should say bits remaining, not bits borrowed for the IP addresses, but that is 2 to the 12th, or gives us 4,096 IP addresses per network. And yes, I, I said we would do Class C's, and when we actually build our table, we will, but I wanted to show you doing it with a Class B. Now, here's an example of a Class C where, or Class C range when we uh, borrow bits. If we don't borrow any bits, it's unsubnetted. There's just the one network and 256 IP addresses. If we were allowed to borrow a single bit, and in class full addressing we are not, that would give us two networks of 128 IP addresses each, borrowing two bits, four networks of 64, and continuing, and if we borrowed, could borrow seven, which in a class C the most we could actually borrow was seven, or six rather, it would give us uh, 128 subnets but only two IP addresses per subnet. Now, uh, the more subnets we have, the fewer IP addresses we have per subnet. So, in the next table, we're going to look at our usable IP addresses and networks. Now, here, we've added, we still have the number of bits we borrowed in that class C, um, and the number of subnets and usable, uh, sub, or, but we've added usable subnets. We have the number of IP addresses, and again, we've added usable. <clears throat> so if we had borrowed, for example, two bits, that gave us four networks or subnets, but because we lose the first and last, remember that calculation was two to the number of bits minus two, that gives us two usable subnets. Now, we had in that same network 64 total IP addresses. We lose the first and last IP address, giving us 62 usable. So you can see how this table works. And you can see at the very bottom, if we the reason we can't borrow seven bits, that would only give us two IP addresses. If we lose two of those, that would be no usable IP addresses. Next time, we're going to look at how we decide how we're going to subnet, how many bits we're going to borrow.